Hello, everybody, and welcome to Second Page, where I take you off the first page of internet searches to find amazing small businesses on the second page. And today, very super excited to introduce you to Fiona. She is a tour operator, Hidden Secret Tours in Melbourne. And I'm super excited. She's been running her business for 17 years. Wow, that is incredible. Tell us about the start. How did you get into it? Where are you now after 17 years? Well, I was making wedding dresses before this, so um, I was throwing my hands up in the air going, oh, my God, I can't do that anymore. And a girlfriend of mine who was a publisher in Melbourne was creating guides to the inner city sides of Melbourne. And uh, the city of Melbourne was looking for a tour product or an engagement product, and together we came uh, up with hidden secrets instead of shopping secrets. And that sort of launched me into something that was about small business where I wasn't marketing myself, which is what wedding dresses were. And uh, it was a shorter time frame than a three-month session. It was just three hours that we would spend with clients to make their day something special. Oh, it's incredible. And um, what I can imagine since you started, you know, 17 years ago, Melbourne's changed a lot in that time. So tell me just briefly, what's it like running a small business 17 years ago versus running a small business in Melbourne now? What I think is most different to me today is that I was seeking something that was about the laneways and small villages, yeah. trying to create my own little world at the time, um, a new world, obviously. And so back then, Melbourne really was the destination that we all assume it is today. The laneways were not the place that anybody even knew about. And so just that notoriety of being in a whole new world, we were the first to market for our type of business. So we're the original. And that's really different in space where we had no competition and now we've got heaps mm -hmm. of it. Or where we're in a place that people assume things about Melbourne, whereas when we started, people didn't know anything about what they could do in Melbourne. Well, especially um, now, I guess, running a business now in the last year would have been super difficult for you. I would love to know if you don't mind sharing with us, you know, how did you cope? Because you were at the forefront of actually not being open at all not been able to trade at all. How did you go? We were, we were already in trouble with the bushfires in Sydney, let's be honest, because a lot of our clients were coming for the tennis. Uh, this was December and Chris, January, which is the biggest time for us in tourism in Melbourne, let alone for locals, but also internationals. Mm -hmm. And once they decided not to go to Sydney as their um, bucket list, then the Melbourne journey, which was still part of their bucket list, we hope, may, was not even part of the regime. So we were already losing so much through early January. Um, we we closed on the 23rd of March. We really did push right through. Um, and what happened after that was that I'd already started a program of supporting my team. We had had an enormous year. I've always run a very lean business. It's um, uh, overheads have been very carefully managed for that. And thankfully, we left a very expensive office in February uh, to a much cheaper one. So overheads, again, were limited. But managing my staff was really difficult. They, they, a lot of them weren't connected particularly to the business. They were contractors or, or casuals. And so managing what to do with their mental health when they were just trying to live was really difficult. And then... The job keeper was great, but it was very disengaging for us. There was nothing really to be done. And the mental space for my, my office manager and others of seeing cancellation on cancellation on mm. cancellation, she said to me at one stage, I just can't look at any more red. It's yeah. just not fun. So we had a business model where we managed in cash flow quite differently in various realms. So we had some that were post-pay, some that were pay on the day and some that were pre-pay. So we didn't have too many refunds to be done, but to be ensuring that we got paid by the post-pay accounts was the biggest drama of my next three months or so. But um, we, we got there and relationships are an essential, essential part of that. And uh, that continues to be the focus today. Yeah, I guess imagine you've just, have you started again now in the last few weeks? We have. We start, we've started a few times. Um, I've actually gone and got a full-time job. So I'm okay. working uh, in the industry but in a full-time space such that 
my wage doesn't have to come out of the business and my team who need to be up to date and, and available um, get to work and continue to work whilst we wait for really tourism probably won't get even anywhere near previous terms until late 22 if we're lucky so um, making sure that they're still connected to the business practicing their skill um, that's the most important because the business is no longer about me we had 15 staff before COVID hit so we're back to six uh, or as in guides so they're more essential in the first point in the reopening mm. than me, myself and I because the brand is relatively stable and uh, the booking mechanisms and the tools we use doesn't need me to be on site full time until we get busy, busy. Sounds like you've got a great foundation, which is where I want to pivot to your Instagram page. Um, in awe that you've got 20,000 followers and I know that a lot of our um uh, viewers uh budding small business owners and in this day and age it takes so long to grow you know i would love to know more about your journey and how you actually got to those 20k followers well let's be honest i i have been around a long time so um that is true uh we we signed on to all social media look facebook opened the year that we opened so we got involved a year later when it was open to the general public instagram was not owned by them then and we, I'm a photographer, that's my habit. So we certainly um, joined Instagram really early. It is the platform I understand better and all of the social media is done by me. I don't outsource to anybody. So therefore I'm not dealing with the voice, I'm dealing with it as it happens. I'm not, I don't have a plan. Um, I did send, did put a little post up recently about would you prefer it if it was more ordered and arranged my our Instagram feed for hidden secrets, and sixty percent said no, not really. We're happy <laughs> with the way that it is. That's so you know that was interesting. There was a there was a diversified opinion. Yeah. I definitely have a very clear difference between my personal my personal work brand and the hidden secrets brand. So I actually have three accounts across all platforms, and I think that has really helped uh, keep me focused on where we are. Um, we don't, we run a very analog business. So it's quite a funny sort of space to be mm. in because we don't hassle our staff to take photos. We don't seek for user generated content. Um, but we do do a lot of marketing where we, we get other people to talk about us. So engaging in how they talk about us was really important. And when I first started, having the handle was more important than what I did with it, just that people knew how to engage with us. And to give roll it, I don't even know what we did particularly except that it was authentic, it was regular enough, it was stories that were both not selling us but also selling our friends and our colleagues, uh, my team, very much selling my team, which I think brings a, a lovely feeling to what Hidden Secrets is about and our core colour, which is yellow. So you'll find yellow across, across our... Um, feeds without it being shoved in your face but it's definitely a brand identity that sticks there yeah super important and oh uh, look i could talk to you all day actually but that's all we've got time for today thank you so much for your time um second page viewers we will be adding a group booking promotion to the website i will be posting all the links below the relevant links below and um, directing you to um, Fiona's page so thank you again for your time today we will talk again I'm sure I have so many other questions I could ask you <laughs> thanks everybody I hope you're all having a great day thanks Fiona